You know, I, I hit a five to start this video and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm still it. Um, by the way, I'm recording this intro without really having any sort of plan at the moment. I didn't plan on recording right now. So welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. I hope you're enjoying the season. I've been out exploring and uh, getting my hands on some gravel. Python mentioned that there was a new gravel biome. And as you can see around here, there's just tons and tons of gravel. You could probably fill up about 100 shulker boxes worth. Now this is modified gravelly mountains. That one got past me while I was following the updates to 1.13. So now there are these massive gravelly areas in extreme hills. That's really cool. So I came over here, filled up a box, and now I've got to wake my, make my way back. But I thought it'd also be a good idea to set up a portal for other hermits to get over here. So I wanted to record, so that is my intro, and I don't know where we're going to go from this point. Since we're not at the stage where we have a proper never hub yet, and I'm not really prepared to build massive tunnels, I figured we'd do things the Joe Hills way, and just throw down a patch of gravel here. Um, it leads through this way, and then there's just gravel blocks leading you in the direction. So it goes through the never fortress, up and over the hill, and uh, it's not very interesting, but it will help other hermits find the gravel patch. And right now, Tango's on the server, and we need to go and meet up with him. Hello? Hello. Hi, is anyone here? Knock knock. Yes, I am home. Oh, I, I've, I've got some name tags. <laughs> good, good. Oh! <gasps> no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, Tango! This name tag that you wanted. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> I see you with your little half shame. Hang on, you, you wanted this name tag, didn't you? <laughs> oh, that is evil. <laughs> I do. I need name tags. <laughs> You you can trust me, right? Uh huh. Right, right, right. Because we're all about trust here. Yeah, man. I'm not gonna just. I like you. <laughs> oh, throwing a trident at me! I didn't even attempt to tag you. Hmm. Didn't even attempt. You taunt me. You taunt me. Come on, all come right. inside. I'm coming inside. I'm trusting you. You gotta trust There's me, man. There's shenanigans there. Can Space you man. can you imagine? Can you imagine what? the comments if I tagged you right now after you literally walked back into your own base? Uh huh. Yeah, you're you're, could, you're standing imagine. on the edge of the most shameful <laughs> moment of the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. This 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 will be shameful without getting who, tagged. So who got um, you? Who got you? Did Cub get you? Cub fan got me when I was live streaming, and I saw him swoop oh, down. Okay. And uh, my first instinct was to type on the keyboard, live streaming, because uh -huh. uh -huh. I'm pretty sure I was watching a Cub video oh, and he oh, said something... I was on. I was on when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're saying that. Yeah, okay. Because I thought there was a rule that you couldn't tag someone if they were live streaming. It turns out it's the other way around, so uh, I just stood <laughs> there and took it, basically. We've actually been doing quite a bit of tags on the live stream. I kind of feel like we should start doing more on video. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to set up... I'm gonna, I plan on building in my episode that I'm recording right now. I plan on building an it building that everyone has to go to and records like who tagged them and yeah, like dates oh, maybe so we stuff get like, like a, that. We get like a history. I like it. I like yeah, it. and it will be the okay. building of shame. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so speaking design, of shame, of um, <laughs> you wanted some name tags, right? Yes, I have a little project, and by little I mean massive project coming up that uh, I pretty much need an infinite amount of name tags. So well, I can provide you with a lot of name tags. Okay. And I just want to know, like, what can I get for these? I've got half a stack here. What, what What do you want? I, you know, I don't know what I want right now. So some IOU notes would be pretty amazing. Uh, is, is there going to be a shop opening up next to clubs? Uh, oh, <laughs> damn it. You've, you've read my mind, Tango. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> can I not get some I, IOU notes? It's such yes, an easy way to you. make money on this server. I can get you. <laughs> I can get you some IOU notes. How about 12 IOU notes for 32 name tags? Does that sound okay. like a good deal? Uh, I happen to have some paper right here. 12? <laughs> 12, yep. 12. You got an anvil? I owe a lot of people some money. I do got an anvil here. Right, oh, what what do amazing. you want it to be called? Uh, Tango owes you. Sure, that'll work. <laughs> uh, Tango, <laughs> Tango IOU. I owe you. One favor. Brilliant. <sighs> These are going to fly off the shelf, man. I know I'm being a sucker here. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. What am I going to have to do for those? That's the question. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Uh huh. I get to decide what an IOU is, though. When someone tries to get it for an elytra or something, I'll be like, nay, nay. 
Maybe, maybe. I'd like to put out the blatant hypocrisy going on here, by the way. No, 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 no. Listen, I have no idea where these name tags came from. Yeah, yeah, sure, know, sure. You did, you did a lot of exploring of dungeons, right? That's where they all came That's from. That's right. I've been very exactly. busy, Tango. I dungeons, haven't... Yes. No fishing rods are involved. Absolutely. None of at course all. not, because that would be horrible, and I'd have to call down a certain duo on you again. Yes. <laughs> these are legit, organic, free-range name tags. Mm-hmm. Do you have no idea how vulnerable you are right now? I'm not vulnerable at all. The, the temptation see, to tag you is no, no, so no. real. See, no, no, the, the shame you would endure in your comments, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. I, I think, think, I think the shame would be all on you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, I'll let you go. I'll let you pass right. this one. All right. I'm gonna keep Thank my dunce hat and head out of here. I, I can't wait to see what I owe people. <laughs> There'll be a shop real soon. You'll see. I'm sure. Goodbye. I've got a question for all of you. Who pranked who here? You know, I got put out in the middle of an ocean and uh, found myself a heart of the sea, which was terrific. Got some diamonds from a chest as well, I believe. And uh, these two have, well, you know, now they owe lots of people on the server. Jeez, check this out right here. We have sold all of the Cub Fan IOUs. Pretty impressive, right? I've done the exact same thing over here. Tango owes you. And uh, check it out. We got six for sale. Pretty amazing, same price. Speaking of the diamonds that we made from this thing, we've made 92 diamonds in our shop so far, and keeping track of all of them this season. Uh, so there's an additional 48, which would bring us up to 140 diamonds, my friends, and potentially another 48 to be made from the Tango shop right here. This happens to line up perfectly with our turtle shop. And by the way, there's a couple of profits to pick up in here. Two more turtle shells have been sold, so that brings us up to 148. And six more stacks of bone blocks. This thing needs a restock, so what is it? 150 diamonds we're at now. I think, my friends, we have earned ourselves a treat, and Impulse has opened up some sort of loot box shop over here. So, I loot. <laughs> I loot box for one block of diamond. I'm going to guess, knowing Impulse, you throw it down here on the ground. Is that not like a hopper that's going to pick this up? <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, that time it got picked up. And do do I not get something in return? What kind of shop is this? Maybe maybe this is part of my punishment for the puffer fish. Oh, jeez. This area is not going to be the focus of our episode. I've just wandered over here while I've been sulking. Down on my luck. We need to get rid of this face. We need to tag someone because I'm having some bad luck with this thing, you know. And I think I know who would be the perfect candidate. Someone who has been in a lot of my episodes this season. And I'm a little bit disappointed, you know. No one's been talking about it in the comments. No one at all. And I'm sure you're going to be talking about it now. Because you ain't even going to expect who we're about to tag. You're it, buddy. I'm it. You didn't think there was really a button to blow up the Hermitcraft server, did you? Uh, no. Aren't you supposed to be nice again? Yes. No one believes that. Uh. Well, I've seen you stalking me on the server, plotting things, but I guess you can't do anything while you're it. What's that? What is it? It's a game invented by the evil... Giarian. He's a real evil genius. But I don't want to be it. 
I thought you didn't want to be evil, but it turns out that you are. Well, what should I do now? You should wait, for the game of tag is going to evolve again. <laughs> <laughs> We sound a little bit stupid. Yeah, we should probably stop now. So we have rid ourselves of the curse of being it. I no longer have to wear those silly pants or that dunce face, and I can enjoy the protection of some shiny blue armor. However, in this place, I don't really need the protection, right? We're back at our Ocean Monument base, and something curious has happened over here. We have lots and lots of guardians inside our cactus farm and apparently oh no you're actually behind a block over there well here's the thing i thought guardians could only spawn in two tall water and if that is not so there's actually only four water sources here and the rest is flowing water that is kind of peculiar every now and then i've seen a guardian manage to escape from down here where we've got our farm and flap around and come into the room but I don't think that's it I think they're actually spawning over there so I need to do some research and the reason so many of them are spawned is because I was doing some overnight fishing as you can see here we've got the dock M farm that thing is so quick and easy to set up and yeah I just did a little bit of fishing and what would you know we got ourselves some Natilla shells an unbreaking book nothing too big but it's always nice to do um, some of that and I got a whole bunch of bone blocks farmed up again, so with those things we'll be able to restock our shop later on. Uh, right now though, what we're going to do is grab some night vision potions and try a new type of mining down below at the bottom of the world where diamonds are called dive mining. And this is a technique from a video by Susu, if I'm saying that correctly. It is Suso. I had to go and check and uh, correct myself. There's a little bit of iron here, uh, and then we will try this dive mining technique, and we'll talk all about it while we're doing it. It's really cool, and it's only possible in 1.13, so uh, we're going to go down a little bit. We're going to put some water there and dig a little one tool tunnel. Can I get the next block as well? There we go. Uh, now I think what I've got to do is sort of jump in here and press control to swim. Or maybe this needs to be a little bit lower. You know, I just kind of watched the video and didn't really think about what I'm then going to be doing. Aha! Right, and if I go up a little bit, I am now in here. Hello! Uh, you are sort of looking inside of me. Very strange. This is what I'm talking about. So now we are <laughs> going very fast forwards because we only have to mine one block. And we found some redstone. So the technique for picking up stuff when you found it is to fill the space back in because then the items are going to get pushed back towards you. There we go. Now, clearly what we need right now is to chug one of those night vision potions. This is pretty fantastic. I really like this idea. There we go. Apparently, I need to eat some food as well. So when you're doing normal branch mining, you're sort of exposing a certain amount of blocks each time you mine what's in front of you. When you go for a one-by-one -one strip like this, you are actually um, exposing the maximum amount of blocks that you could in one instance. So let's think of it like this. When I break this block, we are now able to see one, two, three, four, five. So for every block that we break, we can see five new blocks, and that is the fastest uncovering ratio that you could possibly get. Unless they introduce something like a hammer where you can break lots of blocks at once, this is pretty much it. Um, so this is pretty much going to be the fastest way to uncover blocks that could potentially be diamonds. And yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. Um, the video that I watched, I'm going to link to in the description box down below. I think you should go check it out because they did some really great research. So the numbers that they crunched are how many ores do you get per hour? So the normal two tool method, um, you get around 53 per hour. The poke holes method that I have been uh, singing its praises for for the longest time, my how to find diamonds video. Uh, is all about the poke holes. That one gives you about 55 to 56 per hour, and supposedly this technique will give us 66 ores per hour, which is a really big increase. And so I think this is the way that I'm going to be doing uh, my mining from now on. The downside is, well, actually, I could have just placed down torches, but for some reason I thought I needed a night vision potion. Maybe it's because the video was shot in night vision, it put it on my mind. Um, here's another thing, mobs ain't going to be able to spawn in here, so I technically don't need to put down torches unless I want to see, right? So I could put torches in my tunnel, but if I don't, nothing's going to spawn in here. 
and now making my way back to the beginning. I kind of ironically was actually recording. I'm, I'm, I'm too embarrassed to share it with you, but I was literally saying that you've got to be careful not to go into a, like a, a too tall gap when you're mining out the ores because then you won't be able to get back into the swimming mode if you don't have a bucket of water. Guess who don't have a bucket of water? I don't have a bucket of water. I left mine behind. And as I was saying that, I fell into a gap and I just had to stop. It was just a complete facepalm moment. So I was going to, you know, dive, swim or whatever we're calling this technique all the way back, grab my water and come back down again because it's probably going to happen. You might actually enter a cave system mining like this and then you will need your bucket of water to get back into the swim mode. I'm having a fun with words day today. Sometimes when I record, I just start saying all of these words wrong. And so here I am recording again, telling you about how I've been mining for about five minutes and I found our first diamonds. I'll go back and mine them in just a second. I want to talk about something else, which is placing down torches. So it gets dark after you mine in here for a little bit, and now we really need to place down a torch. We can lean to the side and place one. Um, but you move through here so quick, it feels like it slows you down to then look to the side and place a torch. This has happened. Well, now's a good time to experiment. Can I... I think I can use this space right here. Excellent. Turn around. Grab that. Yes. So, placing torches is a little bit tedious. Just because you move forward so quick, you feel like you have to do it more often. So this dive mining has been a little bit of a happy accident because I actually had some other plans for this part of the episode that had fallen through. I was going to team up with Giarian and the two of us were going to create a tag headquarters, a place that you had to visit when you were tagged. It would outline the rules, we would add some really cool and interesting stuff to it and it would take the tag game to the next level. But unfortunately, I couldn't get a build together in the right time. I stayed up late in the Hermitcraft meeting working on a build and essentially it was a pretty interesting looking building with a tag slapped on the top of it but it wasn't good enough and I couldn't come up with something really inspired and neither could Grian as well and then he said something really straightforward which was don't build it until you know exactly what it should look like and it makes so much sense right like why am I trying to rush building this building if I don't have that you know beam of inspiration to guide me um, so we're going to put that on hold, but that is going to be a future project. When I have the idea in my head, we're going to build the tag headquarters and we're going to take the game to the next level. So the conclusion, I think dive mining is pretty fantastic and I don't mind making those night vision potions. I feel they're essential though, the torches kind of slowed me down a little bit. But anyway, let's check out this shulker box. This is the results of roughly around 45 minutes of straight dive mining and uh, we've got 24 diamond ore which is all right by me I'd say that's pretty good you may have noticed it in the talky over bit but if you place the shulker box on its side it doesn't go upwards and therefore you can open it in a one high space which I thought was pretty convenient so we are heading out of here there are some things back in the main area that I would like to show you that the other hermits have been up to and uh, as we head back here you can see there is now a wall and Wells has been working on a temporary a nether hub. This isn't like a, a permanent, this isn't the design that we're going to have. There's also this staircase, I'm not sure where this even leads to. But yes, he's added staircases, a little bit of a theme with the stone bricks and the nether brick. It's very nice and it'll stop gas from spawning in here, which is great because before he put in all of the slabs it became a gas spawning platform and it was a bit chaotic. It's very dark and moody in here as well, isn't it? And uh, the labels on the portals have gone now as well. Ah, that might make it a bit tricky to remember where exactly it is we're going to. So we need to come back to this place in a moment and just work on the terrain around the foundation here. Or do we? It looks like that's been taken care of. Well, that's just fantastic. Because uh, I was about to talk about uh, what Cup Fan and... Who else was it? Jevin and Python. The, the three of them got together and worked on the modern area, which is this side over here. Of course, it says modern on the other side of the sign, which makes sense. Uh, they put down this path, this cyan terracotta, which I like. Um, this is going to be the theme for the area of the modern district, which we are building in off in that direction. And I very much like these uh, little quartz pillars coming over, like light, uh, lampposts with the yellow for the lamppost light. I think that's really cool. I did suggest, though, perhaps changing this to the asphalt type color that we've got over in our area, which is the grey uh, concrete powder because that's got a bit more of a walkable texture to it. This looks more like a 
a road surface perhaps. Anyway, this just happens to be the material we're building for the side of our building, so I thought when the path stretches over there, it's going to end up looking a little bit odd. Um, but who knows, who knows what will happen, it'll be fine either way. Anyway, I'm coming over here to Cubs area, not only to show you the changes that have been made in this district, um, but to find something that he has been working on. And I've seen a few people talk about this concept, probably when a lot of people saw the effect of Dolphin's Grace with Depth Strider 3, you'd have the idea of what if you captured a dolphin and then used it to travel around fast underwater. Man, that is looking interesting over there. I had this idea as well, and I went into a test world and on several different times tried to attempt to capture a dolphin and then use it to give myself the dolphin's grace effect whenever I wanted to travel fast. And I found a couple of really weird things. One of them is that a named dolphin would despawn in 1.13, which is room right now. And the other thing is that the effect you get from the dolphin was very finicky. It wouldn't ever work consistently. So I wanted to come over here and try this for myself. Now the first thing is the expected thing that I'm not getting Dolphin's Grace. The Dolphin is still there though, so it hasn't despawned and now I need to breathe and now I've got the effect. So it took a moment for it to give it to me, which is fine. That's the kind of finickiness that I experienced. Maybe it's because I went closer to it that I got it, but about here is where you'd want to get it right and bam. So maybe being lower down enables you to get it. Uh, the next one is straight ahead and did I get replenished? I'm not sure if I did or not there. Another thing I could do with his water breathing, right? When you're out of the water, you can see it really clearly. Now let's go back down here and try it again and get as close to that prismarine as we can. Are we going to get the dolphin's effect? See, it's super inconsistent. It's really irritating. Man, I could just hang out here for a little bit then, I guess. Maybe drown? No, I don't want to drown. Well, I can say bravo to CubFam for putting this together. It must have been a fair bit of work to capture the dolphin. Oh, it's just a shame this thing is inconsistent. I wanted to come over here and try it out for myself. Hey, there we go. We got it that time. Because this is a super fast way to travel. Wow. I mean, we are just cruising. That's got to be one of the fastest ways to move about in this game, right? So, uh, who knows? I'm not sure what to make of that. It seems a little inconsistent, but... Even if you wait around for it to kick in, it's still pretty good. Looks like Carl's got a friend to keep him company. And uh, this beacon beam doesn't actually provide you with like any effects. Don't know if that's intentional or not. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to show you what Cub Fan have been up to. That's a really awesome project over there. Taking advantage of the Dolphin's Grace. You go super fast when you've got the Depth Strider, don't forget that. Uh, this is where we're going to wrap up today's episode. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Um, thank you as always for the support. If you have enjoyed it, leave a like. And I will see you in the next episode of Hermitcraft. So ciao for now. Bye-bye.